everybody. My name is Jordan. This is Navi the Cat. Hello. And this is Curse You Jordan. Okay, okay, fine. Jeez. This is the inaugural episode of a new show where I take a game that I either grew up with as a kid or else just really means a lot to me and I walk you through the whole thing step by step and give you my own personal tips and strategies. This does mean a few things, however. First, I'm limiting myself to mainly older games. I may play some relatively newer stuff here and there, but mainly I'm going old school. Secondly, it also means that I'm probably going to get lynched for this, but no Super Nintendo games. Why? Because quite simply put, I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. I was a Genesis kid. Obviously I have a Super Nintendo now and I quite enjoy playing it, but the fact of the matter remains that unfortunately I'm just not as experienced enough with the Super Nintendo for me to competently do a video on any of the games. So when it comes to the 16-bit era, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. And finally, it also means that I'm not going to be doing too many games on the PC because my whole life I've been primarily a console gamer. Having said that, I'm actually going to kick things off with one of my very favorite PC games, Portal. This was developed by Valve and originally released in 2007 on the PC and Xbox 360 as part of the Orange Box Bundle. I myself managed to get it as just the standalone PC disc, although nowadays it just wants to run off of Steam anyway. This was by far one of the most original and unique puzzle games I had ever played in my life up until that point and its surprising amount of dark and ironic humor instantly solidified it as a personal favorite for me. Well, at least until four years later, but we'll tackle that one next time. In the meantime, let's get into Portal. Okay, here we go, Portal new game. Uh, you'll see that I'm able to actually skip ahead a little bit, but that's because I've played this game many times before. But we're going to be starting a new game right at the very beginning. Here we go. Okay. To start, we're in this room. We can't get out. Standard WASD keyboard config. And I can move and jump and look and that's it. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Admission Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun, and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities. Serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from Stand back. The portal will open in three, two, one. Alright. And just like that we are now able to exit. Here we go, into the first little chamber here. Pretty basic test here, standing on the button opens the door, but something needs to be holding it down because it is a pressure plate. So we use the middle mouse button to pick objects up, so we'll pick up this block here, Excellent. set it Please proceed on the into button. the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grid will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube. beginning of each of these uh, test chambers, you'll see one of these signs here light up. One out of 19, so apparently there's 19 of these chambers, and uh, there's none lit up right now, but uh, as we progress, some of these little signs will be lit up as well to uh, indicate what uh, you can expect to encounter in said test chamber. 
Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. Jesus. Alright. All we do here, move in, grab the cube, and move backwards. That's the easiest way to do it. Move back in as soon as the portal changes. On the button, move Perfect. back out. Please move quickly to the chamber lock as there the effects go. of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. Alright. So you get the idea. It's uh, nothing too complicated so far. They're just trying to ease you into it and introduce you to the fundamentals. And each of these uh, chambers are uh, separated by these uh, elevators that we have to ride. You're doing very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. <laughs> Alright, we go through the portal, jump down here, and then we can grab the gun. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... Please proceed to the chamber lock. Mind the gap. Well done. Remember, the Aperture Science Bring Your Daughter to Work Day is the perfect time to have her tested. <laughs> tested for what? So, uh, now that we're able to uh, create our own portals, you'll see that it uh, makes it a lot easier to get around. Um, I'll point out a few other things here for a second here. Welcome to test chamber four. You're doing quite well. Uh, so you'll notice that uh, you can only place portals by left-clicking uh, on certain surfaces, but not on others. Uh, this is pretty easily indicated because the targeting reticule itself will change color, in this case blue, to indicate that you can place a portal on that surface, but it will not be lit up if you cannot. So far we can only place the, uh, the one portal, the blue portal. The orange portal is now entirely automated, but at least we have control over one now. So here's just something a little funny. To ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, let's go down here. Grab the cube. There we go. Oops. Once again, excellent work. As part of a required test protocol, we will not monitor the next test chamber. You will be entirely on your own. Good luck. So this chamber, we actually need to hold down two pressure plates. Um, also, you'll notice, um, if ever you're wondering what it ex exactly you have to do to get the door to open, um, you can trace these little um, lines of lights back to where they're supposed to go. If I step on this button, lights up. Step on this button here, lights up, and you can just follow the pathway. But we need both of them with a bank's big yellow check mark in order to open them. So uh, the mechanics is exactly the same as before. It's the same puzzle. It's just uh, we have an extra step now. So the same deal, grab the cube, put on one, second block is up there, so we'll get up here first, shoot the portal over there, grab the block, pull it through, and there we go. As part of a required test protocol, our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication. Good job. As part of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, one. 
Why do I not believe her? <laughs> do do do, ride in the elevator. Do do do. Alrighty. Quad safety is one of many Energy Center goals. The Aperture Science High Energy Pellet seen to the left of the chamber can and has caused permanent disabilities such as vaporization. Please be careful. And that's not a joke. You really, really do not want to get hit by that energy pellet. If you do, it means instant death. Uh, these puzzles are solved by simply redirecting that pellet via portals into the receptor. Uh, the easy way to figure out where to put the portal with that is uh, these receptors emit this faint little light that you can trace to where they point to on the wall. So all that means is that we have to place a portal there, and the pellet will travel through. And like, here you go. Unbelievable. You. Subject name here. Must be the pride of. Subject on down here. <laughs> Gotta love that personal touch. Also notice, uh, these uh, emancipation grills, you can't actually shoot portals through them. That'll uh, be of note later on as well. Warning devices are required on all mobile equipment. However, alarms and flashing hazard lights have been found to agitate the high energy pellet and have therefore been disabled for your safety. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, so we've got the exit is up there. We'll be able to reach it if we activate this platform to get us over there. We do so by, again, uh, like I said before, you can follow this uh, trail of lights here to what it is that activates it. Okay, it's that receiver, so clearly, again, the puzzle is the same as before. We've got to redirect that pellet into the receiver. Uh, the only difference is that now uh, the automated exit portal is the one aimed straightly at the, uh, straight at the receiver, and we have to place the... Uh, portal uh, at the point of the wall where you see that sort of like burn mark that shows where the pellet is burning off so that's uh, sort of giving us our target however uh, before we do that we want to be on the platform before it starts moving so we can actually place a portal up there and jump down on top now we can redirect that pellet Good. now use the aperture signs on stationary scaffold to reach the chamber lock it's just a moving platform. No, un unstationary scaffold. <laughs> it's a creative way of putting it. So, still pretty basic and straightforward. But don't worry, it gets more, more, much more complicated. Please note that we have added a consequence for failure. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck. <laughs> All right, uh, for this one here, uh, it's the same as before. We want to be on that platform uh, to move over there. However, um, in order to get to the platform, our technique would be to use a portal here to step out onto that platform and then change where the blue portal is there and simply walk back. However, I actually don't want to do that this uh, uh, first this time around because by standing on that platform there, we're in direct line with this energy pellet, so it's going to take a little bit longer uh, to do it this way around, but uh, it's uh, safer. So what we're actually going to do to solve this is redirect the pellet this way first, and then bef as it bounces back, place a pel uh, portal there, and redirect it a second time. There it goes, into the receiver. Now we can place our portals such that we'll be able to get over to where the platform will take us. Oh, it's a trippy effect. At any rate... Wait for that platform to come back and pick us up. Also, yeah, you really don't want to touch this floor. It will kill you instantly, just like those energy pellets. There 
very impressive. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. Oh, yes, I'm sure. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, again, pressure plate to get through. The trick to this one is because of the Emancipation Grill, we can't just bring the block with us. If we do, it gets incinerated. Luckily, we have an infinite supply of these things. And we can't simply just shoot a portal the through it either. Center apologizes for this clearly broken test chamber. Yeah, apology accepted, but uh, that doesn't help me solve it. So we're gonna move our block up here, and now we can shoot a portal through there, like so. Fantastic! You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. <laughs> Well, shucks, what can I say? I, I do what I can. <clears throat> Hello again. To reiterate, <laughs> previous one, where is momentum? Whoa, this computer's got some problems with it. Anyway, you probably caught at the tail end there, the word was momentum. That's what this is all about, building momentum to get over obstacles. So, if I place a portal right underneath me, I will fall through and be spit out of the top. That will give me just enough speed to make it on top of the platform. This here, exact same concept, only now we're going to have to fall farther to build up more speed in order to be spit out a more considerable distance in order to make this gap, like so. On the floor, jump. Spectacular. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. Momentum, a function of mass and velocity, is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. That uh, momentum trick is going to uh, come in very, very handy later in the game. The Enrichment Center promises to always provide a safe testing environment. In dangerous testing environments, the Enrichment Center promises to always provide useful advice. For instance, the floor here will kill you. Try to avoid it. <laughs> Good advice. All right. We'll just wait for that there. Open the button, shoot one through. Okay, and uh, we ran out of time here, but yeah. We accidentally redirected that pellet in the wrong direction. We didn't want it going that way. We want the pellet to be redirected into that receiver there, which means we're going to want for the exit portal to be there. Okay, now. Like so. Boom. And now that activates that moving platform that we can use to get to the middle. You'll also note that as soon as these um, energy pellets um, make it into their uh, respective receivers, uh, the launcher stops shooting more pellets. Okay. And again, this floor will kill you, so be careful. 
But now we can grab the enhanced portal gun so that we can actually shoot both portals. The device has been modified so that it can now manufacture two linked portals at once. As part of an optional test protocol, we are pleased to present an amusing act. The device is now more valuable than the organs and combined incomes of everyone in. Subject and go. Right, so hit the button, shoot one through the wall that opened, jump on the platform, and we'll put the exit here. Yes, now that we can use exit portals, as well as the entrances, manually, using the right button, the game now gets much, much more interesting as we are now in complete control. There will be no more automated portals. Yourself. All right. uh, you'll notice now that this is the exact same puzzle that we were seeing before. Um, the only difference is that now there's no automated po uh, portals. We've got to help ourselves. So we'll put an entrance and an exit. That gets us higher onto this platform here. Now, from this height, we can fly even farther. So we'll just move the exit. Jump again. And then, if we look at this wall here, it'll move up for us, and we can uh, put it on an angular surface. So that will fly us out in an arc to get us to the top platform. Like so. Uh, we still need to open the door with uh, putting a block on that pressure plate there. So we'll jump over. And then jump up one more time. We <laughs> think she had more fun than I did with that. you are in control of both portals, this next test could take a very, very long time. If you become lightheaded from thirst, feel free to pass out. An intubation associate will be dispatched to revive you with peptic sal and adrenaline. Yeah, thanks for the offer, but I'm gonna pass. Anyway, we'll get up onto this platform, grab the block, onto the panel that opens the door. However, we're not going to go through the door. We're just going to shoot through the door another portal because we want to sneakily steal the block and bring it with us. Now, there's going to be on top of two of these platforms here pressure plates that we need to hold down to open the door. So, uh, we can place one here. Like so. Kind of neat how, uh, as soon as it uh, passes through there, it. Uh... Uh oh. Now, see, what we did here was a big mistake because now that block is blocking the way of that pellet. So, we're actually going to move that out of the way real quickly because we actually don't want to be in the way of that pellet or it will kill us. So, maybe we'll take care of that first. Um, what we want to do is redirect that pellet into this receiver here, so that it moves that platform. And now that the platform moves, we can actually get up onto it by placing portals there and there, and wait for it to pass underneath us. Now we can get to that block. And there we go. Now we don't have to worry about that pesky energy pellet anymore, so we'll once again put portals back here like we did before. Have this block fall on top of that one. And on top of the second one. It's really neat to how uh, you drop a object through the portal and it instantly becomes affected by gravity differently relative to where it actually is in the, um, 
And well, also of note, I should point this out now too, that now that we have access to both portals, you'll notice next to your targeting reticle, there's now a little um, colored oval to the left of it, that uh, um, colored blue indicating that the blue portal is the last one that we activated. If we activate the orange portal, that now uh, switches over to an orange oval. Um, that actually is a very handy later in the game uh, when it comes to points where you will need to keep track of what the last portal was that you used so that you know what the next one is that you're going to want. Required test protocol. We can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be missed. <laughs> I feel loved. Yeah, it's got to load each new chamber between each of these elevator segments. Hmm. All subjects intending to handle high-energy gamma leaking portal technology must be informed that they may be informed of applicable regulatory compliance issues. Oh my god. No further compliance information is required or will be provided, and you are an excellent test subject. <laughs> Jesus. This, is, this game's got a real knack for pointing out the nightmarish bureaucracy of this <laughs> sort of button-down office-style way of doing business. All right, we need to get that uh, block, so uh, we will use our momentum jump here, like this. Oh. It's high enough. And oh, look, our stairs are back. On to the pressure plate. sip across this more acid floor that we want to be wary of. Um, sometimes what I like to do when dealing with these um, uh, energy pellets is I'll put both portals uh, right next to each other just so that I can see exactly where they are so that I know I'm not going to accidentally redirect a pellet like right behind me so that it comes up behind me and kills me. Uh, so I'm going to place a blue one as the entrance hop across this here. We can't use the portals to get across like we did before because we need to be placing them to uh, redirect that energy pellet. And uh, again, uh, this is where it might come in handy. For example, uh, that uh, oval next to your targeting reticule. If you forgot what the last portal was that we set, you can just reference that little oval to show that it was blue was the entrance that we set. So now we know to shoot an orange one for the exit and the pellet will come through. Just give it a second here to shoot a new one. There we go. Very, very good. A complimentary victory lift has been activated in the main chamber. <laughs> complimentary victory lift. Wow. I never win anything for free. So thoughtful of them. Another elevator! 